They took him to a workshop where they showed him all sorts of engines. At last he saw a smart little green one with four wheels. That's the one, he thought. If I choose you, will you work hard? Oh, sir. Yes, sir. That's a good engine. I'll call you Percy. Percy the small engine is really, really weird. Out of all the characters in the Railway series books, he is the only one not to be based on a specific real-world locomotive via retcon or otherwise. While there are many 040 saddle tanks that resemble Percy, there isn't one that's an exact match. He does, technically, have a basis, that being the model that Audrey kit bashed as reference material for his illustrators, which itself is based on a kit of freelance design. Percy was also introduced prior to Audrey deciding that his stories took place in the real world on an island off the coast of England, rather than in some nondescript region of the country. He is purchased from a nondescript workshop by the Fat Controller that is never mentioned again or stated to belong to any real world company, which further compounded the issue of what he was beyond a small industrial saddle tank. In the end, it seems Audrey decided to embrace Percy's uniqueness and decided that, canonically, nobody knows his origins. To quote the island of Sodor, an 040 saddle tank of obscure antecedents, Percy is believed to have been built by Avonside of Bristol, but fitters at Croven's Gate have found components by Hunsled of Leeds and other builders. Personally, I like to think that Percy was the pet project of some startup locomotive builder, and was cobbled together from parts of various other engines bought at scrap value. A boiler and smoke box from an Avon side, perhaps some Hunslet made frames and cab fittings, pecket wheels and cylinders, all combined into a veritable Frankenstein's engine. Whatever the case may be, Percy not having an exact basis proved to be a boon in my modeling endeavors, since I wasn't beholden to an exact design and was free to experiment within the parameters I set for myself. Making Percy an HO started with finding a suitable 040 chassis with small drivers and cylinders. However, as the 040 was not a common sight in the States, I was pretty much locked into using a 00 scale chassis from the start. I briefly considered using the Dapple B4, since Percy is sometimes depicted with a long wheelbase, but I was afraid he would end up being longer than I wanted him to be. Between that and the amount of horror stories I've heard about Dapple's quality control when it comes to 00, the B4 was a no-go. I eventually settled on the Hornby Peckett W4 and bought one used on Hatton's. There was definitely going to be a massive overhang at the back, but otherwise, it was perfect. Now I needed to design a body to fit it. This is the first time I've ever designed a shell to fit over a locomotive chassis. Thankfully, since Percy isn't based on any specific locomotive, I had quite a bit of leeway in how I chose to depict him. My only constraints were keeping the features that made him identifiable as Percy, and of course making sure that he fit the chassis. With these in mind, I went to Clip Studio and got to drawing. I used pictures and diagrams of other 040 ST locomotives as inspiration, namely Great Western 1440 and 1338, both of which are Percy-like in their own right, but aren't quite there. However, as you can see, I didn't measure the motor housing before I started drawing. Once I brought my design into Blender, I modeled a mock-up of the chassis, and it became all too clear I needed to revise my body design. I ended up taking my design and raising the height of everything higher boiler pitch, tank, and taller cab. As a consequence, he is taller than I had initially wanted, but overall, it still works. Now it was time to test how he fit on the chassis. This was an iterative process, each time altering the model slightly to make sure it sat flush on the chassis. I went through six different test prints during this, but once I was satisfied, it was ready for detailing. At this point, I went back to the chassis to fit a DCC decoder. The Hornby W4 uses a very odd 4-pin connection that I have yet to see anywhere else, and the only decoders sold with such a harness are made by Hornby. 
I have not heard good things about Hornbeast decoders, so I decided to simply take the blanking plug and solder a small Digitrax decoder to that. This worked for a while, but the way the dang thing is designed meant that the pins on the mail connection started coming loose from their harness the more I plugged and unplugged it, so ultimately I just decided to hardwire it to the motor. Now this decoder also has light functions, as do most basic decoders. Not wanting these wires to go to waste as they did on Toby, I decided to try a little experiment, not knowing if it would work. I was going to add a lit firebox. I modeled two versions of Percy's backhead, one with a closed firebox, and one with the doors open. I ordered some small flickering LED lights in both red and white, and some 510 ohm resistors. I wasn't able to get orange ones in the size I wanted, so I ordered white ones instead and dipped them in clear orange paint. This should have been the part where I say I could have done the same thing for red and that hindsight is 2020, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I got the circuit wired up properly and tested it to a resounding success, but when I went to attach the backhead after painting, it turned out that these 3mm bulbs wouldn't fit with it in place. I tried shaving both the bulbs and the body down with a Dremel to make it fit, but it was no use. Ultimately, I had no choice but to sever the connection. With the body sanded and primed, Percy was coming together. I experimented with a few shades of green on a sheet of scrap plastic before deciding on Reaper Viper Green for his main coat. The next part I painted was the cab and boiler backhead. Since this area is so visible, I wanted to have it at least a little detailed. I painted the walls and backhead using Model Master Grimy Black, which is unfortunately no longer produced. Thanks a lot, Rustoleum! For his smoke box and running board, I returned to my old friend Vallejo Nadu Black, along with Tamiya Flat Red. These were brush painted along with the roof, safety valve, and whistle. While I had designed and printed a whistle, I wanted to reuse the one from the Peckett, as it looked nicer in my opinion. Thus I drilled the hole out to the proper diameter, painted it to match with Vallejo Bright Brass, and attached it with cyanoacrylate adhesive. I also went on to recycle more parts from the Peckett, specifically the handbrake, which I cut down to about half its original height, and the handrails on the boiler. I will need to source more stanchions for the cab handrails, but these will do for now. Front lamp irons were made using .052 inch music wire, while the back lamp irons are... non-existent. I'll have to rectify this in the future. Now, if you've watched my video on my HO scale Rosie, you'll recall that I kept her Westinghouse air compressor attached, which isn't necessarily prototypical to those S100s used at Southampton. Recent research and inspiration from other channels led me to the concept of having my locomotives be equipped with dual braking. My justification for this is that in the 1970s and 80s, the time period for my models, British Railways was beginning to standardize air brakes over the old vacuum system. Any Northwestern engines not already equipped with dual brakes from the early days were to have them fitted in the next decade. With this in mind, I purchased a brass Westinghouse pump from a local train store, and printed air and vacuum hoses to serve as a standard NWR fitting. These will be fitted to most of, if not all, of my NWR engines in future. I may swap Percy's pump over to the left side of his boiler as well, for the sake of consistency with Rosie, but uh, we'll see. With the paint applied and details in place, I set about applying water slide lining from Fox Transfers, and numbers from my custom NWR lettering sheet. After this came a good coating of soot powder, and then a coat of matte lacquer. Screw link couplers were glued in place, then came real coal in the bunker, and thus, Percy was done. <laughs> Making Percy was a wild ride, and I honestly didn't expect him to turn out as well as he did. The Hornby Peckett is a great little locomotive, and I would recommend getting one just to have. I still think he's too tall, but for a first go at making my own body shell, I couldn't have imagined him looking this good at all. 
He isn't 100% complete just yet, though. Aside from the aforementioned cab rails and rear lamp irons, I also forgot to design steps for the cab. I suppose it's fitting, then, that I don't yet have appropriate crew figures for him, either. At some point, I'd also like to add more weight to him, thereby giving him more traction. And, of course, let us not forget the most important part of any Percy, the mail vans. That, however, is a story for another day.